manuscripts and younger materials too, and not only on notated ones, effective and active collaboration with the institutes that hold the given materials is very essential. In their preservation, digitalization, processing, and in making them available, several European countries are sensibly managed by governmental institutions, whereas many other countries battle with administrative barriers and fuzzy owners. For the researchers and for a conceptual system of making the results of their research available, systemic collaboration is crucial. A unique and model example of this is the Augustinian Library in Klosterneuburg. Our guest today is the director of the library of the Monastery of Augustinian Canons in Klosterneuburg, Dr. Martin Heitrich, who represents a specific ecclesiastical institution with an enormous collection of books with extraordinary potential and with impressive priorities in processing the materials of the library and making them available. Dr. Martin Hautrich studied German studies and history at the University of Vienna. His doctoral thesis dealt with late medieval writing and practices of administration in the Carthusian Monastery of Gamming. He was a member of the research staff at the Commission for Paleography and Codicology of Medieval Manuscripts at the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna and a librarian and archivist at the monasteries of Melk and Svetl. At present, he is the head of the library and the music archive in the Klosterneuburg Abbey. We invited Dr. Martin Hartrich to this series of musicological presentations to give us a glimpse into the perspectives of an owner of medieval codices and younger music materials. We invite him to introduce the strategies, the concepts, and also the problems the visions associated with making this well-preserved collection of extraordinary value available. Let me just add a few background details. This presentation is part of a trilateral project called Early Music in Central Europe, Local Elements, Transregional, Transregional Connections, International Research consisting of the national projects of three countries in Central Europe. The first project called Old Myth, New Facts, Czech Lands in the Center of 15th Century Music Development, led by docent Dr. Hanna Bonova Werner from the Masaryk Institute and Archive of the Czech Academy of Sciences in the Czech Republic. The second project called Momentum Digital Music Fragmentology Notated manuscript fragments from medieval Hungary, research system online experience, led by Dr. Zsuzsa Cagani from the Institute of, for Musicology of the Research Center for the Humanities from Budapest, and the third project, Cantus Planus in Slovakia, Local Elements Transregional Relationships, led by me from the Institute of Musicology of the Slovak Academy of Sciences in the Slovak Republic. When you have some questions, uh, please, during or after the presentation, add your questions to Dr. Martin Hartrich into the Zoom chat window, and uh, they will be answered after the presentation. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks for preparing this event, the poster and the Zoom conference to docent Dr. Hanna Blhova Werner and her colleague Jan Haich, and today special for the help to Dr. Riani Tehalas. Let me now give the floor to our esteemed guest, please, Martin Hartrich. Thank you, Eva, for this kind introduction and for the possibility to, to speak here. Um, so I'm, I'm very honored to present the Klosterneuburg um, um, yeah, institution. 
And um, I will switch to my PowerPoint if it's possible. As well, could you please give me the host? You should be able to now. Okay, fine. So can you see now? Yes, we can see the cooperation slide. Okay, it's the wrong, wrong slide. Okay. Something. Okay. It should not be the first slide. <laughs> Sorry. So um, what I want to present uh, today is um, the collection, the libraries and, and the archives of the monastery of, of Kloster Neuburg. And um, it is not a very scientifically um, a lecture, but it should maybe stimulate you to um, go to the sources and to have perhaps um, some ideas for discussion afterwards. So what I want to present is, um, so this is the overview, just a little information about Kloster Neuburg, Abbey and the collections, then there is a little bit more spe specialized on the library and music archive, our working model with the collections, our corporations um, and international networks, then um, ongoing or finished projects and our ideas for dissemination. So perhaps you know the monastery of Kloster Neuburg. You can see here three perspectives, prospects. Um, the monastery was founded um, in 1114 by Margaret Leopold III, who was um, a member of the Babenberg family. <clears throat> he married uh, Agnes von Weiblingen, who was the widow of uh, the, um, Friedrich from, from Schwaben, Swabia, and he was the daughter of the emperor. So it was a very prominent um, um, marriage. And um, he wanted to build his, or he built his um, residence in Kloster Neuburg. In 1133, the Augustine canons came to Kloster Neuburg, and then just a few. Um, Dates, uh, perhaps you know the Verdun altar, this masterpiece of uh, medieval gold uh, midwork. Uh, then a very important date is 1330, where a fire destroyed uh, the church and the rebuilding was um, with uh, very um, prominent um, art pieces. Then uh, also important in 1485, uh, the founder of the monastery was canonized. And so the patron of Austria is uh, uh, lays in, in Kloster Neuburg. It's very important for the connections to the court, to the Habsburg court, um, which is very close until the end of the monarchy in 1918. Um, for music, early modern music important is um, the Baroque uh, reconstruction of the church uh, starting in uh, 1634. And also the, the organ, which is um, almost original from this period has also medieval pipes. Um, so this is very special that this uh, organ survived. Um, then um, the Charles VI uh, wanted to have a kind of Alice Coreal. You can see here this ideal prospect of, of this project when he came from Spain to, to Austria. It was, has never been finished. Um, and you can see here now the situation of the monastery. Um, the advantage is that we have in Kloster Neuburg to, um, from the architecture two monasteries. So the old medieval monastery is almost um, um, survived. And here you have this new Baroque palace um, from Charles VI. And the last um, architectural uh, intervention was um, the finalization of, of this uh, so-called Kaiserhof, 
by Josef Kornhäusl, which is also important for the library because he uh, built the library uh, which we have today. <coughs> the collections uh, are really extraordinary. Um, I just mentioned, uh, so to, to bring it to your mind, um, we have uh, three departments in the monastery, the archive, the art collections and library and music archive, uh, archive. and um, in, in the, it's, it's a really um, more or less complete medieval and early modern archive. Um, most of the sources survived. There were no uh, burnings, there were no destructions uh, during wars and so on. Uh, there is also an, a huge archaeological collection because the monastery uh, was built in an old Roman place. And also some special collections of maps, calendars, autobiographical sources, and most of them are more or less um, unknown. Um, and also a second monastery uh, archive is stored in, in Kloster Neuburg. It's the archive of St. Dorothea, an old Augustinian uh, cannery, uh, which was found by, um, by this Routnitz reform plans in 1416. Uh, or 1414, and after closing the monastery, the, the whole uh, archive came to close the notebook. <clears throat> also, the art collections are uh, very um, um, heterogeneous. So, we have medieval and early modern artworks and treasures, um, lit liturgical equipment, investments, um, and also the collection of modern arts and art craft collection. I mentioned that because. Um, I think the, the, the positive situation in this kind of um, source um, um, funds is that um, we have this con continuity um, back to the medieval periods. So the, the monastery was, except the, the Second World War, um, continually um, active. And um, if we research on the on the old, for example, liturgical liturgical um, sources, we have uh, also the practice um, yet. So now, uh, so we have. Um, so my idea is um, to to connect this kind of uh, habits with with the sources. So it's not possible the whole time, but it could be an, an idea. Um, so the library and music archive, just a few dates, data. <clears throat> the library has about 300,000 volumes uh, and the medieval library is, I think, one of the largest in the Western Latin world, which is uh, still in situ with about two, uh, 1,200 medieval manuscripts. Um, we have around, I think, I don't know it exactly, 2,000 medieval fragments and um, only 400 of them are more or less known or yeah, described. Um, and uh, about 836 in Conabula and also 400 early modern manuscripts, which are totally unknown. And then a lot of special collections, uh, which are a lot of work and I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Um, to the media, medieval library, <coughs> um, first of the oldest libraries from the ninth century. So um, when the monastery was founded, um, the first manuscripts came from um, Salzburg, from the uh, Rhineland. Uh, and then you can see the increase of, of uh, the libraries with the 12th century. Um, these 120 lib um, manuscripts uh, were, most of them were written in Kloster Neubruck, so I will uh, tell you about these manuscripts a little bit more when I present a um, research project. And then um, it, yeah, in the 15th century, of course, there are most of, of the manuscripts, but um, uh, also the 14th century is very interesting. So uh, in, in many monasteries in the 14th centuries, um, the, the number of manuscripts decreases a little bit, but in Kloster Neuburg, you can see this continuity. 
and it's a really research place, a very scholarly place um, due to the uh, connection to the University of Vienna from the medieval uh, period on. Um, one of the main tasks is the, uh, digitization. So uh, we have now about 650 manuscripts totally um, digitized and we cooperate um, in this task with uh, the Academy of Sciences. Um, and you know perhaps uh, the database manuscript.dt and so we load up our manuscripts there. Um, and the library is still active. Uh, so uh, that's pe perhaps it's interesting. In most of, of the Austrian libraries after the um, um, after the end of the monarchy, um, the, the, the library um, were more or less um, yeah, ended up. So, but in Kloster Neuburg, it, it was still going on because um, the canons were professors and they were very interested and very high educated and they have enough canons. So nowadays uh, there are 45 canons living in the, in the monastery. <clears throat> and um, we buy a lot of books. So for research, it's just uh, books for research. We um, and and it's about one hundred thousand books per year, and we have about two thousand five hundred users per year. Okay, I'm sorry. It's it's a mess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, something happened with my PowerPoint. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah. Okay. Just one moment. I don't know what happened, but my PowerPoint is a mess. Um. It's just one minute. So I hope, I'm very sorry that I didn't, I checked it before. Um, so um, <clears throat> now I want to talk a little bit about our um, working model. Um, our main task from the, from the side of the, of the monastery is preservation. So the monastery, the canons are very interested in, uh, in the library and want to have um, um, yeah, it in a, in a um, good uh, mood. And so um, our main uh, resource in, in, in kind of budget is for preservation. So we get, so the, the budget of the, of, of the library is about 200,000 euro. And we have um, we can use it for preservation, and we try to um, organize that with uh, young students, with um, yeah, students in bachelor, um, beginning of the master, and try to um, hire interested people who uh, do internships, and they start with cleaning. Um, inventories, um, digitalization, and they learn uh, how, to, how to deal with the materials in a preservation um, task. And so they can earn money and we can hold them and educate them and uh, in, in the ideal um, uh, way, uh, hold them for, um, for the library. So that they, 
this day and uh, develop um, topics for the thesis. Uh, and this is the, the basis um, of our research uh, concept. So um, at the beginning, there are scientific qualification theses. We support uh, young people. We try to find out what they are interested in, and we try to um, uh, get money for, for the qualification thesis, for example, uh, dissertations, PhDs. Um, uh, and then we try to develop uh, interdis interdisciplinary pro projects because um, through the, uh, the heterogeneity of, of, the, of the sources, so that we have on the one hand preservation things, we have um, um, different kinds of materials, um, parchment, um, paper, wood, iron and so on. Uh, and we try to, um, um, to develop um, projects, um, especially with uh, technical and, and national scientific methods. For example, we um, applied for a grant to develop a system for dating uh, medieval uh, book bindings um, by a new um, method which um, takes or, uh, the, the degrees of organic material, material for example, leather. And um, that we, we work together with the University for Rural Sciences, for Rural Studies. And then we have regional corporations um, in the academic to, to, to bring the, new, the, the young people to the academic field. And we have international partners. Uh, this is very important. So we host uh, summer schools um, for COVID every year, one or two, um, especially with the so-called DEM network. This is a um, network for digital editing of medieval manuscripts. And um, the dissemination. Um, so it's very important that we are connected to the academic teaching. So uh, we invite um, um, yeah, uh, teachers, professors from, from the universities to come with the students. Um, and then we get in, in contact to academic field. Also experts um, um, are important to, to tell about the things we have. And I mentioned the summer schools, and then we have also a kind of um, science for the public with so-called book evenings. So we present book for, for the wider public, and um, we also um, do exhibitions. And these three columns um, uh, go to a library team. So we have a, a team of around 30 young uh, researchers who are connected to the library. And now I'm, I'm very happy that two weeks ago, first of our team um, became a doctor. So she um, had finished her PhD and the next two will follow in the next weeks. So, and these uh, young people who are very uh, familiar to the sources and to the stories and to the narratives of the monastery uh, bring new ideas to them, a little bit old narratives. So the situation in Kloster Norburg is uh, that uh, there are some two dozen uh, stories and it's always the same. So it's very, uh, very difficult to, to, to find new, um, yeah, new stories, new topics. Um, to our corporations, um, we have, so I have to clean up my mess again. Oh, so it's light. Okay, sorry. Um, I divided it in three um things on the one hand we have long-term project 
long-term projects, uh, the Academy of Sciences um, catalog uh, the, the med medieval manuscripts since I think um, 1972. So they have cataloged uh, 400 uh, manuscripts until now. And then uh, I'm very happy um, for the project with Eva Veselovska with the medieval mu music fragments. And I hope that this will also be a long-term project or um, we can work together uh, until um, we don't have any fragments. Um, then we have regional partners from uh, from Lower Austria in St. Burton. There is a, an institute uh, who, um, which is working on, on um, artificial intelligence. So I will tell you later on a little, little bit more. And um, the strongest partner is the Academy of Sciences in, the, in um, several institutes, uh, especially the Medieval Research Institute with the uh, Commission of uh, Codicology and Paleography and so on. And also the University of Vienna is very um, often in Kloster Neuburg and we have uh, several projects. And of course, we are uh, connected to monasteries, especially Melk, Göttweg, Zwettl and Atmon, for example, in Atmon. Our staff uh, is responsible for the digitization of, of the medieval library, and we digitized uh, already uh, 500 medieval manuscripts in Atmund. And the international partners um, are the University of uh, the Masaryk University in Brno, especially in musicology with Jana Perutkova. And then we have a new project with Harvard and Düsseldorf. I will tell you a little bit. And then I mentioned the DEM network, with, which is very international. And we have these summer schools. And then we are in, connected to the University of Tübingen with the medieval art history. I mentioned the long-term projects. Um, then I, we have some ongoing projects with external funding. Uh, one of them is the Scribe. IDIA, so I will tell you later on a little bit. Um, then we have a PhD project, uh, Music Life in the Monastery and City. Um, and then uh, another PhD project, interviewing uh, interviewing of urban groups in late medi medieval Kloster Neuburg. And then this women's cloister of Kloster Neuburg, uh, which is um, funded by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. Um, this project is um, kind of pilot and um, the, the nunnery of Kloster Neuburg was really large, but is more or less unknown. So we know a little bit about medieval uh, music, uh, research on uh, from uh, Robert Glückseder, but we don't know about the, the connection of, of women, the we, we suppose that their, um, the library is still in Kloster Neuburg, but we don't know because it's um, hidden in the, in, the, in the manuscript department and so on. Uh, and then we have internal ongoing projects. Um, we try to do a digital edition of the Kloster Neuburg Traditions Codex with TEI. You can see here. Um, um, picture of the networks they construct in, in this data. Uh, the Traditions Codex is from the 12th century and one of the main sources in this period in, in Lower Austria. And then uh, we have we uh, created a Kohan Geschichte, uh, yeah, Canon Geschichte Wiki. Um, their um, yeah, biographical data of, uh, to Augustine Canyons in, in Austria will be provided for, for the broader um, um, And then we have also completed projects. One of them is um, Performance von Heiligkeit. This was a doc team with four uh, PhDs, um, which was finished uh, last year. And now the dissertations will be finished. Um, and then close the music sammlung, and I will tell you a little bit more afterwards. And one a smaller project is the so-called Magnum Legendarium Austriacum, 
so there is a mistake at I see Austriacum. Um, you can see the link. This was a cooperation with uh, um, Sonderforschungsbereich um, Viscom, where we provided um, a website with uh, this um, corpus of, of legend from the 12th century. And now I will tell you a little bit more about these two projects, um, the scribe ID, um, where we try to distinct medieval scribes um, from the 12th century with uh, artificial uh, intelligence. And then at the end, uh, close to music sammlung, perhaps it's interesting for you as music uh, scholars. This is just an overview. So in, uh, in Austria, we have um, the lucky situation that um, many of the old uh, monasteries survived. So we didn't have the French Revolution. Napoleon um, did also not close any, any monasteries and we didn't have communism. So um, the monastery landscape in Austria is very dense. And the project, so the, the hypothesis of the project is that in the 12th century, you can see here the data, or the dates of the founding of the, of the monasteries. Um, um, this Babenberg colonization was to, to partly um, based on, on monasteries. And these monasteries were um, places of um, knowledge. And the question is, how did they gather uh, knowledge? How did they um, build these libraries? We still have, uh, and the, we still have in the monasteries. And um, in, in this um, first period of writing in, in Lower Austria, um, we don't have too much um, research. So uh, only some scriber with auto autographs, where we have autographs were uh, researched on. Uh, then we have a little bit art historically uh, research, um, but we don't have uh, um, a research uh, which tells us more about the system, about the organization of, of knowledge. And for example, in, in Kloster Neuburg, which was a very, a very active uh, monastery at the, in the second half, half of the 12th century, the, um, 123 manuscripts survived. And uh, due to the new systematic order in the 1830s, um, the, the manuscripts from the 12th century are spread around the medieval uh, library. And um, we have only 40% description described uh, manuscripts from the 12th century and we don't know um, recording in okay sorry okay, okay. Um, we, we don't know too much about this early scriptory um, and we only know one scribe by name Otto and uh, but we have this 120 manuscripts. And our um, approach was that um, it is not be it, it's not possible or it will be not possible to um, to learn about more about this uh, scriptory. So for example, if you are um, a paleographer, then you try to um, yeah to find out the the hands and you can use photoshop and so on but it's very frustrating because we have a, a, about 40000 pages in the 40000 pages in the 12th century and nobody could overview that um so we um um developed a method which was um first developed in with stone gravings in Valcamonica in italia in Italy, um, where so th these old ancient um, stone gravings um, were counted and, and des described by, by humans, but it was it, the problem is that you don't know if it's a natural phenomenon or it's it's artificially um, graved. Uh, 
uh, carved. And so um, with um, artificial intelligence, so, but don't uh, ask me about the methods because I'm not a technical. Um, the, the computer is, um, um, has the same um, or has better output than um, human being. And the computer is not interested in, in, in uh, letters, but only in the um, muster. Yeah. So, I don't know the English word. And so, for example, um, one line, this is a, um, a project with the Avila Bible in Spain. Um, the, the computer um, uh, crop the line and then only the, the pixel are counted. So the, the letters are not interesting. And so this is the method where the computer could um, distinct uh, um, different hands. And so we use this method and develop uh, and um, selected three groups of, of scribes that we know a little bit. And the, the computer learns uh, in this uh, selected uh, manuscripts. And then it's about um, seven, 8,000 pages. And then um, he gives us um, um, suggestions where the, where the, the algorithm um, had found some, some similar and the, and the human eye can, uh, um, can say it's, uh, it is right or not. And so the machine learns. So this is, a, I don't know, yeah, so I'm not a technician, but um, you can see a little bit um, material. So this Augustine group, you can see here, um, change of, of hand, it's very uh, easy to, to see, but it's not so easy if uh, on this side and, uh, and this column is the same hand. And so we hope that the computer will help us and it looks uh, yeah, successful. This is the um, scribe Otto. So if you look at, at the um, at the letters or at, at describing, then you can, um, yeah, to know if you see it, it's the same uh, hand. Um, but the problem is um, that so it's very easy for for the computer to to find uh, the same hand in the same uh, manuscript, but not so easy to find the same hand in another manuscript because the the structure of the parchment and so on of the writing material um, is also important. So this is the scribe ID, um, and the next, the end. I just want to tell you a little bit about the music archive in, in Kloster Neuburg um, and the project Kloster Musik Sammlungen. Um, the music archive was reorganized in uh, six years ago because uh, the musical music materials were spread around the whole, the whole monastery. And um, so we focused or we, we gathered all the materials in a new room. Um, and it's about um, 300 early modern manuscripts, copies from the um, liturgical um, music, about 6,000 printed uh, sources and around um, 1,000 books. Uh, perhaps it's interesting, the uh, Department of um, Church Music, uh, Kirchenmusik, uh, from the Music University of Vienna was founded in Kloster so <clears throat> until uh, 1924. Um, the education for church musicians in, in Austria was in Kloster Neuburg. And so from, from this um, area, we have a lot of uh, books and um, sources. Um, yeah. um, and yeah, perhaps Jana can say something about that. The, we have also a um, collection of libretti. And so um, the, the Klosterneuburg Music Archive is um, 
um, not really inventory uh, catalogized. So in, in reason, for example, there is only there are only entries about Albrechtsberger and nothing else. So nobody, so we, we don't have any requests on these materials, which is a pity. And so we uh, try to develop um, a project, project Klostermusiksammlungen, which were, was finished uh, two years ago. Oh no, last year. Um, and um, what we did is a bit different. So um, we didn't want uh, to catalog the, the Kloster Neuburg Music Archive um, by, uh, for a loan, but we connected uh, three monasteries, Kloster Neuburg, Gretweg and, and Melk. Um, and because um, we think that in, in the early modern period, they were really very closely connected to each other. They uh, knew each other, they um, gave music to each other. And so perhaps we could find something in the, in the archives. Um, what we tried is not only to, uh, to create an inventory, or we'll just uh, describe it for reason, but uh, to uh, in in the inventorization uh, to connect it with the institutional structures, with um, different people who are important for music, not only composers but also musicians or um, uh, the provost or some priests who are. Um, also in this profane and sacral everyday, everyday culture. And um, we have um, good sources because we have four inventories, um, historic uh, inventories, one of, of from the 18th century, one from the 19th and uh, two modern. And uh, so we connected the catalogization the, the, with the inventories and also connected it to personal records, uh, to performance lists and so on. And um, so the music archive should not be isolated, but should uh, the sources should be connected to the sources from the library and from the, um, from the archive. And our approach was um, that we combine digitization, um, the contextualization of the inventory works, uh, and provides the digital sources um, for public and also depict uh, the visualize uh, the relations. And there was one um, trial of edition. And so I try now at the end, um, I, I want to show you some pieces of the, of the database, closed music sammlungen. Um, so you, if you, so this database was developed in the project. Um, the partners were the Donau University at Krems, uh, and the Academy of Sciences, and um, the Masaryk University of uh, Brno with Jana Perutkova. And um, you can see it's only in German. I'm sorry. Um, you can search. Uh, the three monasteries, or you can uh, search um, um, scores. So we have now 6,200 and so on um, entries. Um, and then you can see here um, this uh, catalogizations with the incipits. You can hear it. And so on. Uh, but also uh, here you have the relations. So you can see here, this is the piece, Albrechtsberger, Motette, and then you uh, can um, click to other Albrechtsberger things. So it's just quick because, and then you can see where, um, if you, I hope you can see it, uh, here are these yellow points. Uh, this piece you can find in two inventories in Kloster Neuburg, and then you can, um, yeah, 
click on, on these things. I prepared some requests. So for example, Tuma, um, Frantisek Tuma, you can see here the sources we have, for example, just an iBook, but here um, you can see this Frantisek Tuma is in Stift Göttweg, something, or uh, in Kloster Neuburg, and uh, this piece is in the in these two inventories, the one of uh, uh, 798, I think, and the other one from the uh, 1820s. And then you can see here the entry uh, from the inventory with the incipit and yeah, that's the the database and you are really invited to use it or discuss it and now i try to find my presentation again yeah thank you very much for this Thank you very much, Martin, for your presentation. And I, I uh, open the discussion. You can uh, ask directly or you can write something in the chat. Martin, thank you very much for your interesting uh, interesting um, uh, work with young people with uh, your your concept uh, I think it is very very good <laughs> to work with young people with young musicologists but with the other disciplines so many thanks for this uh, space for the young researchers yeah thank you so at, at, um, at first, I, I really have to apologize for, for the mess in the presentation. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, it's very important to bring the, the young people in an early state of their education uh, in contact with the sources. Uh, because uh, at this point, I think they are um, more interested and, and they are... Um, um, yeah, it will it will influence have a lot of influence for the further uh, research. If if they sow sources, I, I have the impression that um, many people um, study history historic uh, uh, topics and, and never sow a, a historic um, document, and and so I think it's a good possibility. Uh, if, if you have such archives where we try to give a very low um, low level um, um, Zugang. Yeah. But what I, I forget to mention is uh, that a very good um, thing are uh, inter international internships. So, for example, uh, Erasmus uh, internships for three or four months, uh, so that uh, people can really go in, in, into the sources and, and really. Um, so we, we had, I think, yeah, from France, from from uh, London, from um, Brno. So every year we have two, one or two uh, Erasmus internships. And uh, it's, it's for both sides, it's very good because they really know the, the sources and then, um, yeah, they, they publish in our yearbook and so on. Please, questions? Yeah. In, chat, in chat, I found. Ah, I yeah. see. Um, I have. Mm -hmm. I cannot read the chat. Uh, Rianip, can you read it? Because I, can read I, it. I have no, 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 mm -hmm. nobody there. Okay. Yes, I can. Um, the first mm -hmm. question is from Michael Norton. 
Um, do you have or are you planning a catalogue of the early modern manuscripts? Uh, I really like to, but I don't have um, some, but <laughs> there is no, uh, there are no persons who want to do that. So there was one um, uh, Czech colleague. Uh, she was here, I think, for three months for her habilitation. And uh, she was very uh, excited by these um, early modern manuscripts. And she, she uh, promised a, a catalog. And then she went away and I've never seen her again. So I don't know what's happened. It's, it's a pity because I, I think she, she really did a lot of work, but yeah. But it, it, so the modern um, manuscripts, early modern manuscripts in, in monastery libraries are really a, a future topic. So I saw it in Melk, I saw it in Zwettel. They have really a lot of, in Zwettel they have, I think about a thousand. Um, but we don't have any information about that. A lot of um, uh, religious works, but also um, um, scripts from uh, academic education from, from the 18th century. Yeah. And I, I find more and more. <laughs> We also have a question from Barbara Haghuglo, who asks, how much organ music is in the library? Um, I don't know it. Um, so I really don't know it. Uh, what I also did not mention is uh, we have, um, um, so there are uh, two different um, fonts for music. So the, the music until 1600 is in the library connected to the to the manuscripts is the manuscripts department and uh, from 1600 on it's in the music archive and so um, perhaps Jana Perutkova knows more about that but I, I don't know how much organ music we have so I know from the um, um, middle of, of the 19th century uh, the, the editions are this course are here but uh, I don't know that's uh, that's the problem that uh, there is we have no information about this music archive but uh, yeah you are uh, cordially um, invited <laughs> to, to search if i could just ask a question you on your projects slide you had an ongoing project of the digital edition of the traditions codex and i was wondering if you could give a bit more information about that uh, the Traditions Codex is a, a unique source from the um, starting at the 12, uh, 1150s until the 1220s. And uh, the entries are donations from, from the people. Uh, so you have um, just small just entries, entries. Um, but a lot of. So there is a big problem. Um, and um, this Traditions Codex is a really um, hard source because the, the best um, um, people in, in the last three genera generations uh, could not solve the problem because it's so complex. And now uh, there is a um, retired professor, the, uh, Karl Brunner, who was director of the Institute für Österreichische Geschichtsforschung. And he uh, lives in Klosterneuburg and um, he transcribed uh, uh, the source, and now uh, two students um, put put the text in the TI, and we will uh, publish it. I, I hope at the beginning of the next year, twenty two. So this TI um, competence uh, is because of the STEM uh, network, this digital editing of medieval manuscripts. Uh, and the two people who do that um, attended the summer schools uh, and were uh, tutors there. And so I'm, I'm very proud that we, we can do that in with our own stuff, that this TEI. Thank you very much. We have a question in the chat from Jan Sigelbauer. Um, he says, thank you very much. How does the computer handle the possibility of one scribe using two types of text, um, bastarda or textualis? Does it recognize the script of the same scribe after a year or after several years? I know it might be hard, especially in the 15th century. 
no, he cannot. Uh, and so our um, border is, um, so, so we only work in the 12th century with the Carolingian manuscript. It doesn't work um, with the individual uh, writings, but these individual, more individual uh, writings with the cursiva, uh, the human eye uh, can, can see it better. And um, so um, this uh, kind of, um, of method and this kind of algorithm uh, does only work with this Carolingian manuscript where, where you cannot um, distinct it, so where, where the writing is very similar. And um, if, if he wrote it in the, in the morning or in the evening or after three glasses of wine, so we could not solve it now, but we will see what the, what the algorithms uh, will suggest. But, yeah, but to this project, uh, so so I think the, the new um, access to the sources is that we did not um, think like a paleographer. It's just a pixel and and nothing else. So the paleographer, so we have paleographer has to has to look at it, but the, the machine is not interested in the letter. And so just and this is, I think, the new uh, approach. We don't have any more questions in the chat at the moment. Can I ask only uh, one? It is not very good question, but uh, do you think uh, is it is is it possible to find uh, such method? A computer method to uh, notation, to describing of the notation. Um, so I, I don't know because I'm I'm not so familiar to to the notations, but what we try now is to develop this method for Flodoni, because Flodoni is, is very. Um, um, so I even don't know the German word, uh, um, structured. Um, and so it's it's a um, muster. So I, I only know the, the German word is mustererkennung. And if you have this um, muster, it doesn't matter. So I, I, I can, could imagine that, that this, it could work for the notations, but we could ask Markus Seidel from the, the computer special, uh, specialist. Because the Klosterneuburg Kloster Bibliothek uh, Library is a special example for the continuity. You speak uh, about the discontinuity and uh, the medieval continuity of the notation is a fascinating space. So it is a very, very good example for for uh, do some 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 project uh, with uh, detail detail research, for example, for notation only for notation, but it is uh, isolated uh, space. Uh, we must uh, work with music uh, content, but the notation in Cluster Neuburg is a very specific uh, topic for me especially so the perspective is very 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 important for me for example yeah um so i, I think you know better how, how much um, material we have which is interesting so um, and to develop uh, such an al algorithm you need a critical mass of uh, of pictures so for example for the 12th century we have forty thousand pictures um, and we can train uh, the machine with 10,000 pictures. And then we can, uh, so the, the, the algorithm can, can search in, in the other 30,000 um, 
pictures. And we suppose that there must be some um, same hands because we, we, we did, there, there were not uh, 400 scribes in this period. And if, if uh, in the music notated um, sources is, is enough material, uh, then I think it could be worth to, to try it. And uh, what we, um, so the, the chance in Kloster Neuburg is um, that, so I showed you this land, uh, this map with the, with, with the monasteries, and uh, they were connected in the medieval period. And the chance is to, uh, to train the algorithm in, in the Kloster Neuburg sources, and then uh, to, to go with this algorithm to other libraries. It would be, so the next step that we go to Heilingreuz, for example, uh, where we know that, that two or three scribes were in both monasteries and, and then uh, take the, the algorithm uh, and he could sort. Um, so so the, the thing is that the algorithm um, supports the human eye in sorting the mass um, sources. And then the human has, has to decide um, which kind of uh, scribe or uh, something like this. Thank you. We but, have. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I want only a small question. Do you have some network uh, with the other um, uh, Austrian monasteries um, research or methodology network? Do you speak about your libraries um, and the future of the library? Yes, we try to. So there are some uh, colleagues, for example, in Göttweig, um, Bernhard Rameda, he is very interested in, in um, research. And we work together with his Kloster Musik Sammlungen. But also in Atmund, for example, uh, they are very interested. But the problem in Atmund is that it's really dislocated. Uh, but now we, we um, digitize uh, the medieval library. And I think in, in a few years, um, um it, it could be possible to um to work with this digitization with, uh, with these pictures but um it's i think it's changing in austria and, and this should really motivate you to to come to austrian monasteries because the um the new generation is um our secular people also employees not monks or canons because they have not enough uh, personal resources and um these younger people are, are very, really interested in, in, in research, um, also in, in Melk or in, um, yeah, in St. Florian, for example, I don't know. Um, they, um, there is, I think for three, four years ago, they had an, a new uh, Kustos and he really wants to have research in, in his library. So. We had no time, no time, and it was COVID. But the next, uh, the next monastery will be, I think, uh, Saint Florian, which will come to our network. But we, we really try, and and for example, this Kohen Geschichte Wiki is is another step that we um, get in touch with the other uh, canonries or other Kohen Stifte. Um, so this is a project uh, which is from the congregation, um, from the, the order. And they like it, and so um, I, yeah, I think it should be another step to 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 integrate or to motivate the, the monasteries not to be afraid uh, of those scholars. We have another question in the chat. This is from Hannah Vlagovana. Um, this would be an excellent tool to identify relating fragments across the libraries. Do you know if Portal Fragmentarium uses it? Um, which tool do you mean? The I think it relates to the recognizing of scripts. No, uh, this is not used by anyone because it uh, is in in development now in the project. So it's not um, it's not finished yet. Um, and yeah, so we are now in the middle of the project. We have another one and a half year. Um, but yes, if, if it works, then it, it should be used by, by everybody who wants it. So 
Last question, please. Well, we have no question, Martin. Uh, thank you very, very much for this presentation. It was um, other other world than our world of musicology. <laughs> but thank you very much for your time, for the preparation, for all 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 ideas, all stimulus. The stimulus are very important for us, for researcher. And I have um, uh, one question on the uh, Honza Zygubauer. Can you say us something about the uh, uh, presentation in December? Because Hanka is uh, in train and she, can us, she cannot tell us uh, the invitation for the next uh, presentation. Uh, well, I am not very prepared to to present our our next talk, but it will be related. It will be related to the finding of uh, Notre Dame fragments in Prague National Library. So we did we did a research on on the context within Prague and within Bohemian. Bohemian musical culture of the 13th and 14th centuries. So I cordially invite to to the next ECME to talk. So it will be presented by me and by Hanna Vlaverna as a double lecture. Thank you very much, Honza. And thank you very much, Martin, once more. Thank you very much, Ariane, for uh, coordinating and uh, our technical things. I wish a nice day, nice time. No COVID in uh, your oh. <laughs> space. Uh, and thank you very much, Martin. And thank you very much for your presentation. So you. bye. have you a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Herzlichen Dank, Martin. Anna. Ja, ich, ich hoffe, es war okay. Das ja. Es tut mir leid, dass meine, meine Präsentation durcheinander gekommen ist. Aber du hast Apple, Apple, aber das ist nicht, weil du diesen Computer hast, oder? Nein, ich habe es vorher durchgeschaut und es war okay. Und es ist LibreOffice, ja. Hm. ja. Äh, kann ich noch etwas fragen? Hören Sie mich ein bisschen? Ah, ja. Äh, wir waren in, ich bin in ICE nach Basel, ja. <lacht> äh, wir waren neulich in Hoverpot ähm, und äh, es ist unglaublich schwierig, dahin zu kommen. Die äh, Mönche haben fast keine Finanzen, dass sie äh, eigentlich mehr mit der Bibliothek machen. Ich wollte mich auch öffentlich fragen, aber von wem sind sie Finanzen? Bekommen sie auch vom Staat Geld? Nein, also wir... Ähm das einzige Geld, das wir kriegen vom, vom, vom Staat, ist, wenn wir Forschungsprojekte gewinnen. Aber okay. ähm, das, also das ist der Vorteil in Kloster Neuburg, dass sie Geld haben. Ähm, und, und eigentlich, ja, also sie zahlen sogar selber ein bisschen mit bei der Forschung. Also zum Beispiel ist es ein äh, Musikdissertationsprojekt, ähm, da, da geht es um die äh, Mitte 19. Jahrhundert, um diese Stadt- und Stiftmusik. Da zahlt die Hälfte das Stift und die Hälfte das Land. Aber äh, ja, das gibt es auch in Österreich manche Klöster, die, ähm, ja, die nicht so viel Geld haben. Aber es gibt trotzdem Möglichkeiten. Also nämlich äh, gerade so habe ich so den Eindruck, in, dass, dass zukünftig dieses ähm, Cultural, Cultural Heritage dass da ziemlich viel Geld auf der Straße liegt. Und gerade wenn man Hohenfurt zum Beispiel, wenn man da was kombiniert mit, 
mit so grenzübergreifenden Sachen, da, da kann man sicher was aufstellen, denke ich. Also, also in Niederösterreich zum Beispiel die sind sehr interessiert in Projekten, wo wir mit, äh, mit der Tschechischen Republik oder mit Slowakei zusammenarbeiten. Ähm, die wollen das sehr. Da kommen wir noch zurück dran. Danke für die, für die Info. Das ist sehr, sehr wichtig und stimulierend. Ja, ja super. <lacht> Danke. Ja, vielen Dank, dass ich da reden durfte. Das ist sehr, sehr nett. Ich hoffe, es war... Ähm, okay, ich bin ein bisschen unsicher. Also noch einmal herzlichen Dank, Martin. Vielen Dank für deine Zeit. Du hast so viel Arbeit und du machst auch Zeit für uns. Also wir brauchen diese Stimulen, diese... Neue, neue Kräfte zu haben, neue Visionen. Ja, ja du bist eh eine ganz wichtige große Neubürgerin. Ja. Freut mich sehr. Leider nicht, leider nicht. Gut. Also, ähm, Dankeschön. Wir, wir werden uns noch sehen. Wir sehen uns, ja. <lacht> Baba, danke. Danke. Hanka, dziękujemy bardzo pięknie. Rianit, you can, you can stop the recording now. <laughs> oh, to są już mała dawno.